How are we doing everyone and welcome to episode 5 of Talking to Mod. If you've been here since the first episode, thank you very much. If you're new to the podcast, welcome. Sit back, relax and enjoy. This week we've got an up and coming band from Glasgow called The Hazy Sundays. They sent me some of their music in the week on Twitter and I'll be honest with you, I really enjoyed what I heard and I thought let's get them on and let's find out a little bit more about them. So ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 5 of Talking to Mod with The Hazy Sundays. Enjoy. Whoa, there he is. Hi, mate. All right, what's How up? How you doing, mate? Fuck well, me, he's upside down. I know, you're upside down there because we couldn't get connected on the laptop. Turn your phone. Can you turn your phone the other way? That's it. How, we... How many you got in there? Four of you. There's four of them, man. Hey. Starting it off, it's like a little hostage video we've got going on, isn't we? <laughs> <laughs> how you doing, man? I'm fantastic, boys. How we doing? We all right? Good, good man. man. All good. So all listen, good, this man. is this is as much as for me to know about you. Then other people know <laughs> about you as well. So I'm looking forward to getting to know you. You sent me. Oh, here he is. The keys are in the background. Uh, he's the, he's the shy one, in it. Man. But, what um, the laptop? I sort of set and stuff, but it's like so the angles a bit off there. But anyway, but then. You're good man. Like you sent me some of your music in the week, uh, last week, wasn't it? Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, last. I, I was last year. I, I think I seen you put a post about you were like sort of looking for bands and stuff for your broadcast, and I sent you a wee message, man. I like to be. No, definitely, definitely. It's good to have you on. So as I said, I'm going to try and have yeah. like a couple of up and coming bands every now and then. Just to, do you know what? It's just good to help people out. And as I said before, you guys come on. Fuck me, if about three people watch this, but then three people go out and listen to your music, then job done, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? So you sent me you sent me the tune. I'll be honest, I liked what I heard. And uh I'm not an easy man to please, trust me, ask the missus. But um, I liked it. And uh do you know what? Let's start from the beginning, boys. Where are you from and introduce yourselves? Cool man, so I'm Sean, I'm for Dundee. I just in Glasgow now. So, I'm Pete, I'm from Glasgow originally. I'm Ross, I'm also from Dundee as well, but now living in Glasgow. And I'm Marco, I'm from Glasgow as well. Uh, so we're all from Yeah. You are? Mm-hmm. Together you are? Yeah. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> you tell this is rehearsed, can't you? <laughs> Right, so, Aye, so man, so no, it was good because it's like me and Ross knew each other like way back in Dundee back in the day, and we both moved to Glasgow. Um, so it was weird, man, how we sort of like met up again. We were sort of like in bands and stuff, different bands in the Dundee music scene back like when was that, two thousand six, two thousand seven, so, about that time. And then like sort of went separate ways and stuff, and then ended up moving to Glasgow and joining. It was a different band we were in. Getting in a band together and stuff, man. So it's weird how shit happens, man. Right? And then we met like Marco and Pete, um, and sort of formed this band. How's it going so far? All going good? Brilliant, man. Right? Yeah. Ah, yeah. You're class, man. Right? See, we started in 2017. Like started jamming together, man. It just pure clicked, man. Eh? It was like it was about November time. Aye, it was about it was about in November. I right? one one of our first gig at King Tut's in December, just like past there, December two thousand and twenty-two. And that was our first like gig together, man. So it's been brilliant, man. Aye, it's been nice. Normally, if people come to a gig like uh, for the first time, the uh, the f- first. Compliment we'll get of people is it sounds like we've been together for years. You know, we we, we gelled unbelievably quickly yeah. in the studio. So uh, it gives us a, a pretty good sound and a tight sound when we're playing live as well. So it's brilliant. Yeah. I, I didn't know you were only to get so was that from last year you've been together? Yeah. Uh, I, November, bit November we started jamming this before the were about November last year, well maybe October, November time I Last year, my first gig was in King Tut's in December. Right? A uh, lovely little iconic venue to start off at as well, eh? How was that? 
definitely, man. It was great, man. It was because we were meant to be doing another gig in Edinburgh. That was meant to be our sort of debut gig. And that got cancelled, so we got the offer of King Tut's gig, and it was just pure perfect. I've never played King Tut's in any other bands I've been in, so it was like a pure class opportunity. Uh, brilliant, brilliant debut gig. It was some buzz. Yeah. It was class, man. Talk us through it. So your first gig, iconic venue. I bet, were you bricking it a bit, or were you thinking, right, we go out there and we just do the best we can? <laughs> see the thing, so obviously it's the nerves kick in, but see once you're, you're about to go on, man, you're buzzing for it, do you know what I mean? It's always that sort of like, that initial first never. I'm always like that before gigs, so it's getting a bit easier now, because now I'm just buzzing to get out and gig, man. But um, I, it's like that sort of like, nerves, you're always quite good. You know, was like, nah, we just go out and do what we do. And, I think it's just about going out and enjoying it, man, eh? because you know, they think too much about, like, oh, what's this and that? Just go and do, do our stuff, man, and go and have a good gig, man. And we usually do, but any bad gigs, really. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'll be honest, I've, I've done this, I've been in the entertainment industry for a while now, and I still, I still brick it, no matter where I'm performing, yeah. I absolutely brick it yeah. before every show. I think it's more to do with the love and the passion you've got for it. And that's not just me talking, that's everyone talking. Yeah. You know, you hear people go, oh, I'm really nervous before this show. If you didn't have the nerves, then you're sort of like, maybe your heart ain't in it. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying that to the chilled person oh, in the band. You know, I'm not oh, saying, you know, start being sick before you get on stage and all yeah. that. But sometimes nerves are good because you play on them, you go out yeah. there and you absolutely rip it apart, don't you? Definitely, man. I agree. I think without the nerves before a gig, it almost becomes pointless in a way. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the nerves, the, as, as scary as it is, going up on stage, you know, I absolutely love performing. And I'm sure I can speak for the lads with yeah. that as well. But <clears throat> if the nerves weren't there, then it would almost feel pointless in a real weird way. Because, you know, this, you've, um, you've still got the nerves that come up, but it's sort of changed to excitement, so your heart's still pounding. It's a different kind of nerves, you know. It's, it's good. I, I'm a, I'm actually grateful for the nerves, I quite like them. Yeah. Uh, it's adrenaline into that, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're pure dopamine chasers, man, right? <laughs> see, see getting that sort of that good buzz, man. That, I love that good natural buzz, man. It's class. Fucking, yeah, you can't beat it, to be honest yeah. with you, mate. I mean, the buzz you get off performing, it's better than any drink or drug I've ever taken, mate. Yeah, that's that. class. Brilliant, man. And well, it's after talk... it's like doing that sort of stuff, clear mind and stuff, do you know what I mean? It's, it's totally different. It's brilliant. I mean, I mean, we're going to touch up on a bit yeah. of um because you sent me some information about this this festival you're part of and uh yeah. i absolutely love what it stands for and uh and, and what it is we're gonna we're gonna touch up on that in a bit but let's talk yeah. about still music related growing mm. up what sort of music were you all listening to i think it's about a different kettle of fish man what be us is a total i'm a big leather team fan yeah brilliant <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm a big Libertines fan, but uh, Oasis, so obviously, man, growing up sort of at school, man, like your school, we were like right into like sort of like, it was all that sort of scene, the mod scene and Quadrophenia and stuff, and from the, the, the school, we are the mods and all that shit, um, right into Oasis, and then sort of like Libertines came along, um, and that was really like a different sort of change of music I was into, man, and it was great, man, I loved all that stuff, um, that sort of like indie sleaze era, man. Um, I was sort of my influences, but it would be yourself. I am um, kind of a wee bit, well, obviously, I kind of grew up through the 90s era as well, so I always loved kind of bands like Oasis and Blood, bands like kind of Stereophonics and Feeder, but probably the band that kind of struck me the most and wanted me to kind of start playing music, probably Nirvana. I remember seeing them talking pops when I was younger. Yeah. And, and they, didn't, they didn't want to mime the song. And top of the box always wanted you to kind of mime it. Yeah, so he managed, managed to persuade them just to do the vocals and he did it in this kind of dead low voice just to kind of take the pitch. <laughs> I, I, I love that. <laughs> um, that kind of thing, I just thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a band, like, get a guitar, and I ended up always by the 
time, so I like to play drums, which is what I'm doing now. But um, I was that probably struck me the most. Mm. <coughs> I like I got kind of old stuff as well, like kind of Elvis Costello and all of the Cure as well, like kind of bands like that. So, Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, for me it was. Um, I think when I was a teenager, I was quite into the sort of a punky sort of scene. And as I got older, I was sort of, like Sean says, uh, <clears throat> the best way to describe it would be the indie, uh, indie sleeves kind of era, you know, that sort of phase. Like some people call it indie landfill, which mm. I think is music. I'm not worried when you call it that, but that, that would be one of the uh, indie sleeves sort of uh, landfill sort of stuff that I liked. Um, I think my, my favourite band of all time, and they always have been, is The Cure. You know, I love The Cure. But um, the band that made me want to pick up guitar was The Libertines. And um, was not, I, I really liked the music, liked how sort of uh, fast paced and punchy it was. But I also liked the way <clears throat> when The Libertines came onto the scene, you know, every band had that wall between band and fans. And The Libertines knocked that wall down, you know, and let the fans sort of in. You know, like the, the, the welcoming the fans, stage rushing and stuff like that, and mingling with the fans. Uh, that's what I love about them as well. But like I said, the music too. So that'd be my influences. So I like, uh, you know, um, stuff like The Cure, Joy Division, New Order, and then on the other hand, Libertines, Twisted Wheel, you know, those fast yeah, fans. Twisted Wheel, Twisted Wheel. That'd be mine. Uh, cool, man. Cool. I'm a wee bit different, like, but I love classic rock. Early 90s sort of Seattle stuff, but I love Britpop as well, but I love like C60 stuff like Hendrix and all that as well, The Who and all that, I love all that stuff. <laughs> uh, not really anything sort of for the last 10, 15 years I've been here really, so more the older kind of stuff. Yeah, I know. But, but, but we all mix together. That's it, totally, man. It's like, brilliant, brilliant. Man. Marco's lead guitar makes a lot of our songs, man. Marco's lead's really dominant in our tunes. Uh-huh. Totally. Sure. Aye, very different. Aye. Mixture of good names there, and then you put them all together, and it brings out the music that you are bringing out. Let's talk about when you first brought out a bit of music and put it out there on a platform. So let's talk about the response you got of people. I had jokes. I remember we were quite worried about that, like, because it was like, I hadn't really sort of, like, I hadn't released music myself, like, singing and stuff for a wee while. Do you know what I mean? So it was a wee bit like, Worried about that, but we done that first recording, never know that was our first, our first single. I remember just putting like a wee taster of like a wee 15 minute thing on Twitter, and loads of people were sharing it on and stuff, retweeting it, and I was getting so much good feedback, oh, buzzing, can't wait for this and stuff. I remember that, Mark would be like, the into like, this is the music. And the guy, uh, Mark, he's a cracking guy, he's been really good to help out band. Um, he, uh, like, got an early listen and stuff, and he was like, that's banging, man, I really like that and stuff, I'm quite blown away by that, and we were like, fuck, this is great, man. Um, so, we released it, man, it was just, it just went in really well, do you know what I mean? It was like, our Twitter was just going on stop, man, and some buzz, man, like, maybe we've got a, a good genius. Yeah, especially for the first like, three singles we released, mm-hmm. we hardly done any practicing before them, but there were yeah, three absolutely. singles, but we must have just rehearsed them yeah, maybe two weeks before, and yeah, yeah. recorded them. But we gelled that quickly. I think we're all quite competent players as well. Yeah. Took the road home. Like, totally, but um, we practice a lot and everything. The momentum was there. But yeah. I would. How many gigs we done there? Ten or twelve or something? Not even as much. Just uh, uh, no, but, yeah, no. but no, it was, it was great, man. The response. But see, see, like the Twitter community, man. It's like see, see, we're in there. It's like I think it'd be quite hard. Do you know what I mean? It's been great. Uh, like people like um, two, Kiss of Two Daffs and stuff, writing reviews for uh, There's loads of like indie indie music and stuff. There's loads of different sort of pages out there that have been really good helping us. I mean, hundreds, too many to rattle off, but hundreds of people just constantly retweeting my stuff, supporting the band, sharing it. People like yourself getting on podcasts and stuff, do you know what I mean? Um, it's, been, it's been amazing for it. Even yeah. people just commenting on your stuff, just Aye. give you such a boost. Like, totally, totally, man. People just it's unbelievable. Like I said, I think just people sharing their music about and helping sort of like unsigned artists get their music out there. That yeah. means it's been really good for us. Yeah. But I went to good man first first release man by buzzing. I think that after we recorded what when did we record losing control? 
Am I right in saying you uh, you did a show with Reverend and the Makers? Am I right in saying that? Yes, man. I was just there uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks yeah. ago. Great, man. See, see, and that was it. And I didn't quite worried about that because we're then again, it's like your songs. Some of your songs are not really like the songs were wrote on an acoustic to start with. Do you know what I mean? But to try to do it acoustically, like, it was a bit different, but it was good, man. And I think we, I really enjoyed it. Do you know what I mean? It went into really well. Great reception as well, man. Got quite a good few new followers and stuff for that gig. Um, it was a great experience, eh? Um, just sort of doing that and obviously getting support better from the mayor. That was, back, so, eh? that was all we were most nervous for, because uh, you stripped back and you're sort of laid bare. And, uh, uh, Obviously, you've no distortion or anything to hide behind the drums or anything like that. But no, I mean, it was absolutely fantastic. I did. I went really well. I was, I was buzzing. Well, obviously, I'll see plenty of bigger crowd as well, and people just watching you and stuff like that. So, yeah, it was fantastic. And people actually tuned in to the music. Do you know what I mean? Everybody was in the garbage. Do you know what I mean? Everybody was sort of like tuning in. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
And he's just like, I'll never forget that and stuff. And like, I think he thought it was, I mean, it was just genuinely, nah, it's like, how did he call me that? We'll just set up four hours and get that. We'll just come up with names and we'll just, that was the one that sounded the least. No, it was like, so it was just where we It was more like four days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I always find that dead hard to think of a band name. You're always like, that sounds stupid and you're, you're, you're going back and forth with stuff. But um, I what the word hazy? Do you know what it was? We had that gig for King Touch and they kept asking us, like, right. we, need, we need a name. And me, me, Sean and Ross were going for about four days on WhatsApp, sending names over and just uh, nothing was sounding good. And, and uh, that well, was... <laughs> mind the first name we had. <laughs> well, but the first name we had, like, was my mate Eddie. Like, we had, like, a WhatsApp group chat thing that was, like, me, him and a couple of other guys, like, I'd like, sort of, like, jamming. We used to, like, send tunes and stuff on. Um, and he had a name on that. Um, and we were going to use that sort of name, but we were on a past a few people, and they were like, no, nah, he's kind of, he's, he's kind of call it that and stuff. And um, so, uh, so it was like, uh, hazy Sundays, man. It was like, I think we just got to that point where we were like, look, hazy Sundays is good, man. It's like, like that name, quite, quite, had many hazy Sundays in my time. Uh, I for it. No one else had the name either. Uh, which was the main thing. Really, uh, I can't find any other bands called Hazy Sundays, which is which is good. We even there was there was a point when we went like uh, <coughs> at least I went through a random band generator, a name generator, oh, just purely right. out of curiosity. And one of them was like uh, a game of your your band name is uh, Radioactive Microwavable Penguin, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was actually pretty good. Unless, so, yeah, it's not easy Sundays, mate. Right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You ain't gonna, as Bez said, you ain't gonna forget that in a hurry, are no. you? Oh, let's talk remember. about. So after you sent me a little bit of music, you sent me, and it's the first time that I've ever come across a festival like this. And mm -hmm. if I do get it wrong, then stop me in my path. But am I right yeah. in saying it's a festival based around recovery? Yeah. Yeah. Aye, exactly, man. It's a drug and alcohol free music festival, do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's not just for people in recovery, it's also a festival for people come back if they want to enjoy a gig with no, no booze and people bring their kids. And that. Aye, people bring their kids and, and just, just a good day, do you know what I mean? But it is a recovery festival as well, yeah. So we have a lot of different addiction services and stuff there as well. Um, basically promoting their services, encouraging people to maybe like look at getting into recovery and stuff like that as well. Me and my mate, so it's, it's myself, my mate Eddie Clark and, and, and my pal Derek Watt, we sort of like started this about four or five years ago. Um, so that was the, that was like the fourth event we had um, just there. And basically it was just sort of started, it was like, like Deek um, was like, got us like idea start I sort of like we we're on the music, we're all in recovery as well. Me I'm talking about my pals who start this festival. Um we're no like anti drugs or anti alcohol or anything. We just couldn't uh, use successfully. Do you know what I mean? So so we sorted ourselves out. Um and then I did got this idea about starting a, a music festival or just have a gig, do you know what I mean? We sort of any alcohol and stuff in it and it just sort of grew, do you know what I mean? It was like um we applied for like, a lot of funding and stuff, and like the big lottery funded it, and a lot of like a different like addiction services and stuff helped as well. They put a bit of funding, and so we had a lot of sponsors and a lot of promoters. Um, and we done like the first year, like the first year we had like Resurrection, the, the Stone Roses tribute band, and we had um, like an Oasis tribute band, and then some like local acts as well. So that was the first year. It went down great. I think the first year there was like maybe like 500 people or something there. So it was quite quite a good turnout for the first year. Um, then lockdown hot and stuff. So it was like, I sort of threw it. Um, but then I, we, we, we've had another couple of events since then, which have been really successful. But that year there was our biggest, our biggest year yet. Um, there was like, over the course of the day, there was like 3,000 people turned up. And the event, see this, see this event, it's a free event. Do you know what I mean? So we don't, it's, it's free entry uh, for people to come into and stuff. Do you know what I mean? So, aye, and then getting people like Chris Heller, man, I'm a huge Sea Horses fan, yeah, man. Yeah. Huge fan of Chris Heller, man. So, so, so see like getting Chris Heller on the line up and then getting Bez, man. He was just a total legend. And Bez was saying, like, I don't know if that wee video I sent you, it's great to be straight, man. And he was like, pure all for it, man. He, he was great, man. He was really good with everybody. See, like, 
a lot of people as well, like they've never been to it. A lot of people attend it. Some people are attending for rehabs and stuff, do you know what I mean? So they've never ever been to something like this, like a, a big gig like that, and just best cutting about it. And it was mental, but it was class. It just shows what, um, aye, what, what you can do in recovery and sort of like, aye, I think it's going to grow, man. Aye? It's just like, no, it's just going to grow. 100% and I'm going to, uh, when I saw it, I loved the idea and uh, I, I promise you now I'm going to be uh, sharing the shit out of it and, and okay, talking man. about it. You need to come up to it next year when we get the dates on it. I 100% I'll bring the missus yeah, and the little boy, we'll be there man. Good, good, good. Definitely mate. So let's, listen, let's, let's talk about what's coming up next then. I want to know your next show and then I want to know what you got planned for the next 12 months. Yeah. yeah. Well, the next thing is Skinner Brothers. We're supporting Skinner Brothers in Glasgow. Yeah. That's where, that's where, that's where my next gig um, in Glasgow. Where, where else have we got coming up? Holy Coves. Yeah. Do you know the band Holy Coves? I'm sure. From Wales. Oh, I must have heard of them, mate. Yeah, man. man Cracking guys, man. Um, so we're supporting them as well. Um, in Glasgow in September. Brilliant. Yeah. Will you have a, a good in England as well? Some festival or something? Ah, oh, like. Pickford Fest or something, aye, in Cheshire. Aye, oh, yeah, in Cheshire. Yeah, Manchester, innit? Yeah. yeah. Aye, Pickfest or something it's called. Yeah, so, I've heard of that, I've heard yeah. of that. So, aye, a few gigs. <coughs> Thording. We're going to try and get our own headline gig for the end of the year as well, because we've only played one sort of headline gig. That was at the start of the year, so try and focus along with that. We'll just try to get bigger and better support gigs as well towards the end of the year, play in bigger places. So, yeah, see what happens. Just try to get myself out there, man. Do you know what I mean? Get as many gigs as possible and um, just get a good bit of coverage, man. And we're going to release sort of like an EP slash album as well. Yeah. Hopefully. yeah. Brilliant. Well, boys, I mean, before, before we let you go, though, why should people listen to your music? That's right. Shit talk. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Have you got anything else you want to share with us before we go? No, nah, man. Just check my music, out, man. I we really appreciate it. Where do people the... listen to your music? Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, all all the streaming platforms we're on, and obviously we're on other socials as well: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, the the usual stuff. So I'd be appreciated if anybody. And um, listening, fancy the listen check with you. That'd be, that'd be great. And we need more fans as well, so I can start stage diving as well. Boys, I've really enjoyed it and I hope you have too. Nah. Nah, it's it's been been great, great, man. Thanks a lot for having me on. I really appreciate it, man. Eh? Nah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Been oh, watching man. your for a long time, man. Oh, thank, you. thank you. God bless you. It means a lot, <laughs> that. Thank you very much. Nah. One right, day I'll mate. get a proper <laughs> job. <laughs> Boys, I'm going to love you and leave you. Just log out and I appreciate that. All right, lads? Cheers, mate. Thank you for coming on. Appreciate that. Take care, lads. Take care. There you go. So they were the hazy Sundays. I really enjoyed them. And you know what? I'm going to tag some of their music at the bottom of this um, podcast. So that was episode five. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed it. Look after yourselves and keep it magic. God bless.